everyone. In this video, we are going to show you how to set up Salesforce mortgage flows inside of Financial Service Cloud. So it's important to note you will need a Financial Service Cloud environment to follow along with the steps inside Salesforce. So I'm here in the Wealth Management app and I'm looking at an opportunity, I just called it Refi, and it's for the Bob Apples account. And this um, flow, or I guess all the flows, will need to be set up on the residential loan application object. So the residential loan application object is the core object in the mortgage data model. And so I pulled up an example, or I guess a, a picture of the data model. So this is provided by Salesforce, but we can see that the uh, lead is kind of where everything starts, turns into an opportunity slash account, and that opportunity is linked directly to, to the residential loan application. So that's the core object, and then everything that is connected to the residential loan application has to do with the regular 1003 information. So you have assets, liabilities, income, employment, declarations, addresses, um, all that sort of stuff. So um, we will dive into our residential loan application object, and it comes kind of pre-configured by Salesforce, and that's fine. Uh, what we need to do is create a few new buttons. So I'm gonna press the setup uh, gear icon up here and select edit object. And we need to create buttons. There's three flows in particular, and so that's what we are going to create. So on the left-hand side, I selected buttons, links, and actions. I'm gonna select new action. And the action type will be a flow. And the flow, we can start out with maybe the uh, borrower or lender flow. Let's see, we have lender loan information, borrower information, that's what I was looking for. And I'll just say uh, plus, I learned that uh, from my current company. Uh, they do a little plus sign before things. I think it's a really helpful way to indicate a new record. And you know, just plus borrower info I think is good enough. So we'll start there and we'll press save. So we've now created this action and paired it with our flow. I'm going to click on the object name for, for the residential loan application to take me back to the configuration screen. I'm going to click the page layout functionality, select the layout, and now we just simply need to drag our uh, action to the, the uh, Salesforce mobile and lightning experience actions. So I'm going to click mobile and lightning actions and select the borrower info. I do need to override the predefined actions, so I'm going to click that here. Now that that's overridden, I can drag our new action to the canvas. I'm just going to quick save that. And now if we go back to our application and I refresh, I would hope to see that new action kind of pop up here. And there it is, right in our uh, button area. And so now we can call our flow directly from this residential loan application. So this would be the borrower information uh, Salesforce mortgage flow. And you can see it collects standard 1003 information. So we, we might do borrower name, Bob Apples, citizenship status. I'm just gonna kind of click through these. But uh, this entire flow was built by Salesforce. So um, your rep or potentially, I mean, you can surface this in a experience or community. And so either your reps can walk through uh, with uh, prospects or I guess potential borrowers, they can go through these steps to collect 1003 information, or you could surface it in a community. Uh, current address name, I don't know, we just call it apartment, apartment one. And I'm really just kind of clicking through this to, to show what it looks like. Do you want to add an employer? You could say yes, add in employer information. I'm just going to press previous. I'll say no, I don't want to add an employer. We'll click next. We could add in monthly sources of income. Press next. Yeah, we could call this royalty. <laughs> We're on YouTube, so I'll just call this YouTube royalty. <laughs> High aspirations. Um, and we could select here. I think there's a royalty. Oops, royalty payment. One dollar a month. You could add multiple sources of income. And so again, a lot of this is just 1003 information that you would normally uh, expect to see. Property name, uh, 415 Mission Street, I think is one of the default properties they give you. Press next. 
investment. So I'm kind of just filling this out rather quickly. And I think this is the final page. Um, so you can you know make your de declarations about finances. Perhaps there was a bankruptcy or we'll just say um, we have an outstanding judgment against us. Press next. Ooh, one more uh, demographic section here, gender. Press done. There we go. So so there it saves. And what happens is the flow yeah, obviously captures all that information, but it then works within the pre-configured data model to create records uh, for each of the things that you entered. So if we were doing applicant income, I believe our royalty of $1 would show up there. And you can see that here on the summary tab. So if we go through, uh, we didn't do the assets yet, but applicant, there should be a new applicant. So we have Bob Apples with you know some of the demographic information here and different um, fields filled in. If our declaration, I think we said we had a, a judgment against us of some kind, so the outstanding judgment box is checked. And so a lot of the information that, that uh, either your rep is collecting or uh, that the borrower would be inputting into an experience cloud uh, site uh, will show up here. So let's uh, take the next step and we'll connect the next two flows that need to be connected and I'll just show you how to do that. It's exactly the same thing that we did before. So if you still have your residential loan application object up, you can navigate back to that. And I'm going to click buttons, links, and actions. Click new action. And just as we did before, we will select an action type of flow and we'll pick, um, we can do the assets and liabilities flow. Again, the label, I'll just do a plus button and then asset and liabilities. Press save. We're forced to kind of navigate back to the object. Then again, click buttons, links, and actions. And again, we can make a new action here. And we'll again, select flow. And I think the final thing that we need to do is lender loan information. So I can do plus lender info. Click save, and now we have our three flows hooked up to two different actions, and we need to get the two remaining flow buttons onto the page layout. So I'm going to click page layout, again navigate to mobile and lightning actions. I'm just going to drag assets and liabilities and lender info to the top three positions. I'll quick save that, go back, refresh our page here. and they all pop up there. So as long as they're showing up there, uh, you should be good to go. And these flows look very similar to the borrower info where um, they're built by Salesforce. They kind of have a clean look to them. And we're really just collecting 1003 information here. So we already defined a borrower. Um, so I guess this is a good time to point out that the flows do have dependencies on each other where you can't run the assets and liabilities flow until you've defined a borrower. But um, now that we have defined a borrower, we could select that borrower from the list here, press next, and you know we could add in last assets or liabilities. So you know, you could add in like a 401k account or you know bonds, all the the common things that might be pledged as collateral or included as an asset on a 1003 application. So in summary, we created three new buttons, and for each of those buttons, we linked one of the existing Salesforce flows that come with Financial Service Cloud uh, to the buttons. So we linked the borrower info, the lender info, and the assets and liabilities flows to their own buttons. We added those to the page layout and that gave us the ability to uh, complete the flows. I didn't mention this, but it is important to note these buttons will only work on the residential loan application object because it's passing in a record ID for this RLA and you'll need that in order for the flows to trigger. So with that said, I hope this was helpful and uh, have a good one. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce flow tutorials designed to turn you into a flow ninja. With that said, have a great day.